What would you say is the number one reason why people fail? Not necessarily why they make it, the complete opposite. Right, lack of brains, lack of effort. Lack of brains, lack of effort. Yeah, they just, they don't do the work, they don't learn, you know. When you walk in the room, when you start a business and you start to talk about somebody, you're, you're never in a vacuum with no competition, you know, unless you're just extremely lucky. And if there's gonna be competition, that means somebody else knows your business as well as you do when you get started. And if you walk into a competitive environment and they still know more about the business than you do and more about your customers, you're gonna lose. And, but most people don't consider that. They don't do the work. They don't learn more about their industry. They don't know even about their business. I mean, and so you've gotta put in the effort to know more about your industry than anybody else. Um, and that's, that's the brains part and that's the effort part as well. Because look, if you're competing with me, you, you better know what you're doing, otherwise I'm gonna kick your ass, you know, and you're not gonna outwork me. And so, you know, the combination is usually what kills businesses early on more than anything. You know, I started my first business when I was 12. I was buying and selling um, baseball cards, buying and selling stamps, anything I could do to make money, I, I was hustling and trying to do so. And um, I'd have these little sales. And it was great, I made money and I, I mean it was, you know, and I, I learned as much about business when I was nine, 10 and 12 as I, I learned any other time. You know, I talk about the one thing in business you can control is effort, going out there and sales, curing all. So I, I think you gotta get that first customer first. And then when you get that first, what did you learn? Reiterate, get that next customer. And then hopefully as you learn more and more through the process, then the next one, the next one, the next one becomes come by even faster. And you've just gotta bide your time until, it, until it starts to click and then grow with it quickly. You know, if you're trying to release a product that needs to be ubiquitous, you've got to go as fast as you can. And, and you know, sometimes being young and trying things, you're so naive and you don't know any better, all you do is learn. And if you fail, it doesn't matter. And so whether I was nine, 10, 12, 16, 21, the failures were irrelevant. You know, so I don't, I don't think there's a default, default template for success, but I think there's things that you can do to put yourself in the best position to succeed. You know, the thing I learned at Indiana that was more important than anything else, I learned how to learn. And learning became far more important to me because the one certainty in business is that it's always gonna be changing. The, if, if you're not always learning, if, to this minute, if, if I'm not continuously learning, if I'm not just absorbing as much as I can absorb, someone else is gonna kick my ass, right? So you talk about paranoia. The, the greatest source of your paranoia should be knowledge. If someone else knows more than you do, and if you're not learning, if you don't know the learn, if you don't know how to learn, if you don't have a thirst for learning and acquiring information, you're you're SOL. I always say, you know, for every one of my businesses, I, I said, what would I do to kick my own ass? You right? So whatever business you have, there's somebody trying to put you out of business. There's somebody trying to, to take a bite out of mm -hmm. your business. Mm -hmm. And it's better for you to figure out how they're gonna do it rather than they do it. Um, and so yeah, that's being paranoid. And so you have to be paranoid. You have to anticipate other people's next move and moves and you can't ever, you know, downplay the competition. You know, I was telling um, I was at a business plan competition this morning for at a college and they were kind of being dismissive of the competition. And so you can't ever do that. 
you know, they're out there trying to take you down and they're not just going to sit still. And, and if you're good, really, really good, you're going to inspire them to work even harder, faster, better. And so you have to be, you know, very self-aware of what you're good at and what other people are good at. And, you know, a healthy dose of paranoia makes a big difference. I mean, it's very helpful. So do you think like, let's just say if we put 10 guys here, you interview them, okay? You could within a five, 10 minute, minute interview say, this dude's not gonna make it as an entrepreneur. Could you pretty much know that? Yeah, I mean, I can, I can typically tell, right? I can tell um, by, by um, their passion. I can tell by their focus. I can tell by their preparation. You know, there, there's a whole realm of things in any business. Here, you know, here's, here's the business you're in, and here's a thousand things that influence whether or not you're gonna be successful. And really, to me, by, you know, through my experience in businesses, I can put myself in his position and say, okay, here are 900 of the thousand things he has to be aware of, and then go through and ask. And by how many of those or her um, issues they've been able to address already, that kind of gives me a sense of how hard they're willing to work. You know, and I can tell by the questions they ask me. So all I have to do is say, okay, what do you want to know? And you know, when they start saying, what should I do? They ask you. Yeah, well, yeah, and that's fine, right? And I want them to ask questions, but you know, people like to say, you know, the only stupid questions are the one you don't, ones you don't ask, and that's not right, right? Because the questions you ask tell every, tell me, tell whoever more about you than anything else you do. Because in particular, it tells me about your preparation. If you ask me questions about just basic things that you should have known and you should have down to a science, that's going to disqualify you almost more than anything. You've got to know your own skill set, right? And you've got to know how that fits within your company's life cycle. You know, you're talking, you know, alluding to it earlier about entrepreneurs being born or built, you know, and I think they're. I knew I was wired to be excited about business. How or why, I don't know. But, you know, and there's certain guys that have the genetics to jump out of the gym, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There's certain guys, you know, that, you know, when they golf, they have the muscle memory and, and the discipline. You know, Dirk um, Nowitzki may not be the most talented guy in the NBA, but his discipline and his focus to do what's necessary to be successful, he's willing to do and combine it with being seven feet tall and being skilled, you know, it, makes him an amazing basketball player. So it's, it's understanding what your skill set is, finding the right place to use those skills, and then going for it. You know, will that make you 250 grand? It depends if you pick the right industry. But whatever industry you pick, if you outwork everybody, if you try to be a little smarter than everybody, if you try to be a better salesperson than everybody, if you try to be better prepared than everybody, you've got your best chance. Because if you don't do it and somebody else does, you know, I have the saying, work like someone's trying to take it all away from you. You know, work, mm -hmm. I actually work like someone's spending 24 hours, working 24 hours to take it all away from you. Mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of the way I look at it.